All right, Wendy, what do you All right, you ready? we got some good questions I'll, today. I'll, I'll go for it. I like this one. John says, I have wrestled with the story of Job for many years. Each time I read it, I try to find something that justifies why God would allow Satan to do all these horrible things to his faithful servant, but yet I can't. It makes me question God's love for us and question if the, the same scenario can be applied to all the bad things that happen to people. How do I gain understanding and accept this? Look, first of all, you've got to understand there is evil in the world, and this is an attempt to, uh, to give us an understanding of evil. And there is a malevolent force, a person, a being named Satan, hmm. uh, or Lucifer, or Diablo, or whatever he's called, uh, who hates people, and he wants to destroy people. And so uh, he said, listen, uh, the reason Job loves you is because you've done all this good stuff. The guy's rich. He's got a wonderful family. And, uh, and if you took all that away, he'd curse you his face. And, and God says, well, all right, you challenged me. Let's see what happens. And uh, so, yes, he went through some bad stuff. But when it was finished, <laughs> when it was finished, you've got to remember what it says in there. He said, I've heard f f about you from the hearing of the ears. But now my eyes have beheld you, and I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. This is the real anointing of God, where, where because of those, that suffering, Job had a revelation of God that he had never had before. And when it was all finished, God gave him twice of everything. Twice as many donkeys, twice as many cats, uh, you know, whatever else he had. He had donkeys and he had uh, uh, camels and he had all that. He had double. So he doubled his wealth, gave him back all these wonderful children. Job's daughters are the most beautiful in all the uh, East. So God restored it to him. He went through a small time of testing. That happens to us. But the devil is out there to destroy people, and that's what this shows. So why you would question God on account of that? God had it all under control, but he let it happen so that he would bring his servant Job to a new level of appreciation of the spiritual value of the Lord. All right, what's next? Amen. Love reading that last page of Job. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Well, Rob says, Dear Pat, is it true that there are people who think they are saved but actually are not? Does sin determine the level of your salvation? Well, what determines the level of your salvation is whether or not you've been born again. You know, that's what it amounts to. Have you come to Jesus Christ? Are you trusting in Him? Have you put your life into His hands? Are you walking with Him day by day? That's what it's all about. And uh, so uh, some people, the, the question was, are there some people who think they're saved? They're not. Yes, there are. There are people who... Uh, they went forward at a church, and they're, they're living for the devil. They, they, they've, they've made some sort of an empty profession, and their religion is a sham. And they're, sure, there are plenty of people that way. Okay. And he asked, does sin determine the level? No, I don't know about determining level. How, who's going to tell you about that? I don't know. How, do, how does anybody know? I don't think that's the case, no. Okay. Mary says, is yoga a counterfeit for Christians when they practice it to receive peace in their minds? What does the Bible say about this? I'm very uncomfortable to be part of this. Am I wrong? Well, yes, you are wrong. Stop it. Uh, I tell you what, when they do that yoga, they, they have a mantra and they're praying to a Hindu god. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's all part of the ritual. And so it's not just uh, stretching. The stretching part's cool. I mean, if you want to get stretched, I mean, it's good stretching. But once you get into it, you are praying to Hindu deities, and you're entering into a whole new religious system. So the answer is, do you want to get out of it? You ought to get out of it. Okay. Mary writes, are Christians who do magic tricks true Christians? What does the Bible say about this? Is this connected to sorcery and divination? Well, if it's, if it's magic, it is, yes. But I think uh, there's so-called ledger domain sleight of hand. The hand is quicker than the eye, and they're cute little card tricks and stuff like that. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they call it magic, but it's not magic. It's just, it's just games. They, they, it's just fun and games. Look, I now have the ace of clubs, and suddenly it's the ace of spades. And what happened? Oh, that's, my hand is quicker than your eye. That, that's not demonic, you know. But it, 
it's, if they're doing real magic, that's a different area, and that's prescribed by the Bible. All right, let's. Scott says, we are a small rural church, and our pastor recently left without notice. I am unsure if I am being called to preach, as I do not have any qualifications or education. However, I do feel it may be my duty to stand in for a couple of services. Is there any way I could make things worse by doing this versus, cancel, versus canceling the service until a visiting preacher is found? Um, you can always testify. Don't try to preach beyond yourself. But, uh, you know, I, I cannot but speak of the things that I have seen and heard. And, you know, let me tell you what God did last week. Let me tell you how I was, uh, had an abscess on my foot, and, and I took it to the Lord, and He healed it. Let me tell you what He did to my daughter who was in school, and she was struggling, and I prayed, and here's what God did. And then, you know, let the congregation share their thoughts. And if you're kind of a cheerleader in the middle of that, you can be a blessing. So uh, don't hesitate. You know? Might be better than the preaching. Yeah, a whole lot better than the preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the preaching, you know, I'll push you to sleep.